Historically speaking, the NASDAQ has never fallen a thousand points before. Two trillion dollars evaporated in the market and we've seen it coming and today it's here. What does it mean for a recession and what does it mean for the real estate market? On August 5th, $1.93 trillion was wiped out from the US stock market due to fears of a global recession. The NASDAQ dropped by over a thousand points and Fox Business reported that they have never seen the NASDAQ down a thousand points ever in a single day. And of the $2 trillion, who really got wiped out? Let's take a look at the Magnificent Seven. You know what I'm talking about. NVIDIA, Alphabet, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Tesla just on August 5th alone lost $520 billion in market cap. Those seven companies make up 43% of the NASDAQ. I've personally invested in NVIDIA and I'm like, oh, is this the AI bubble? Like we've been pumping money for the last two years into these companies developing AI and is this the AI bubble that's really bursting right now? Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? So the Fed met last week and they decided that they weren't going to cut rates. And now they're calling an emergency meeting. There's really only one thing that the Fed can do, cut rates. Wharton's Professor Siegel calls for a 1.5% rate cut by the Fed, 0.75% cut in an emergency meeting and an additional 0.75% in September. And on top of that, Goldman Sachs has increased its prediction of a US recession in the next 12 months up from 15% now to 25%. If you're a subscriber on my channel, you know we've been talking about rate cuts all year round and for some reason, the Fed has not been dropping them and I'm starting to wonder if they're looking at the numbers and starting to think we might be a little bit late to this party. Party? No, not party. No, it's not party. The Federal Reserve has maintained high interest rates for over a year, making borrowing a lot more costly and they're now considering the possibility of cutting those rates for the first time since the pandemic's peak. Frankly, I can't believe we've gone this long without cutting rates because people have been suffering from affordability issues as in like mortgages. I want to buy a house, but if I do with these high rates, literally my mortgage is going to cost me several hundred dollars more a month and I just can't afford it. And this is already affecting mortgage rates because they've already dropped last Friday and again today, Monday. The average 30 year fixed mortgage rate fell by 22 basis points to 6.4% on Friday, August 2nd, the lowest since April, 2023. The 15 year fixed rate decreased increased to 5.89% and that's the lowest that we've seen since May 2023. And rates dropped even lower on Monday, August 5th to 6.125% for a 30 year and on a 15 year mortgage 5.49%. Now, mind you, America has been used to a decade of very low interest rates. So the last couple of years, it's been awkward for us to see them so high. Now they're starting to come down to a rate where it's going to start moving and stimulating the market, which is really what the Fed is trying to do. It's when Americans are buying and selling property, it stimulates the economy in the most meaningful way. Now, I know we're talking about the Fed having an emergency meeting and lowering rates and then even doing it again in September. And they're talking about a total of three rate cuts before the end of the year. But already when you just look at last week's reduction, how is that affecting affordability? Well, for example, a $400,000 home would have had a monthly payment of $2,240 in April with a 20% down payment. It now costs around $2,000 a month, making the loan more accessible. $240 a month of savings, that's considerable when people have been pinched. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments about potential multiple rate cuts in 2024, combined with the recent poor jobs report, have heightened expectations for more aggressive rate cuts. But there are two inflation reports and another employment report that are due before the Fed's September meeting. And if these reports don't counter recent trends, the Fed might start urgently reducing rates. Now you put on top of that the recent crash. Markets are now anticipating a significant rate cut as the Fed September meeting with a 75% chance of a 50 basis point reductions and some experts predict three rate cuts by the end of the year. Imagine for the moment if we end this year with interest rates back in the 5 to 6% range. That is going to create so much relief for people's budgets and it is enough to start stimulating the economy which is great because we're still missing 6 million US single family homes. They're not building them fast enough. And if we can start moving the economy faster, we might in the next 10 years move through that shortage. But what's that going to do in the meantime? Well, it's going to crunch affordability in a different way. While the Fed is lowering rates, which is going to make people's payments lower, it's going to jack up the market and we're going to see prices climb, climb and climb. And so are they going to cancel each other out? If I drop my rates, but my price of home goes up, people may end up paying the same amount of money. But you see, this is not just an affordability issue. This could actually be a sign of a recession coming. 
we see the two-year and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yields have aligned, which often signals an impending recession and is causing significant market reactions. The July jobs report showed only 114,000 new jobs falling short of the forecasts. Additionally, previous month's jobs numbers were revised downwards, and as a result, the unemployment rate rose to 4.3%, again, the highest it has been in the last three years. Here's the crazy part. If the Fed cuts rates, this is going to mark the first rate cut since the Fed began hiking rates in 2022 to combat inflation. But could a rate cut lead to a recession? This chart depicts the U.S. federal funds rate over the years and overlays when the U.S. economy has been in a recession. The last few times that the Fed cut interest rates from their peak, a recession followed closely behind. So with the Fed gearing up for rate cuts again, is the U.S. economy due for another recession? If you go back further and look at the recessions of 1980, 1974, 1970, 1960, and 1957, you're basically going to see that rate cuts came after the recession started, and it was a way to get the economy out of a recession. Right now, we think a recession might be pending, so what they're doing this time is they're attempting to cut the rates to see if we can pull out of it first. Listen, if you got money in a 401k or IRA, it now might feel a little bit more like a 301k or a 201k, but if you're a subscriber on my channel, I've been warning you, why would you want to earn four, five, or 6% on your money in a 401k or IRA thinking it's safe when every seven-ish years on average, we have a recession that pulls these numbers down? We think these low returns actually make us safe, but if you want to look at what really happens and you look at the numbers and you look at recessions, the people who own real estate, those are the safe people. For example, over the last decade, I've tracked my last 2,130 real estate purchases. And year over year on average, I'm earning 60% on my money. Compare that to 6% in the stock market, I'm literally outperforming the stock market 10 to 1. It's 10 times higher returns on my money. And it means when the market is in the trash, that doesn't mean that real estate is. So yeah, the stock market crashed today. But my real estate, well, it's just continuing to go up in value. And it baffles my mind that so many people at the end of the day just insist on their 401ks and IRAs when real estate outperforms. As in, over your 40 years of working, the average person puts $254,000 away for retirement, but the average equity in their home is $304,000. So their accidental plan of building equity in a home actually outperforms 40 years of savings. If you want to weather the storm, you're going to need a different financial game plan. Because I'm going to tell you that 401ks and IRAs, they're antiquated. And because they're so safe with low ROIs, they actually don't compound enough meaningfully in your lifetime to make the kind of money that you need for retirement anyway. If you want to get a free game plan or have a multi-millionaire's perspective on what I would do in your situation, click the link below, fill out the information, and let me get in touch with you and share with you step-by-step -step what you can do to get back on track for the retirement you want without having the volatility in the market. It's not really a secret that I don't like 401ks, but you might be wondering why. I mean, after all, don't you get a company match and isn't it like free money? Well, there are actually five reasons why the 401k is a scam. And if you want to understand what they are, click right here and watch this video.